Hi everyone, in this video we're going to see my development setup as a full stack software developer or a software engineer that what are you using on daily driver from software, what operating system I'm running on, what development tools I use on daily basis to pretty much build website, debugging website, creating code, deployment and so many things happens on a software engineer career. So yeah, this is actually curious in here is my desktop. And as far as you can tell, you probably can see it first and what I'm using. But before going any further into the setup, I want to just like give you an introduction of who I am, uh, what I do in my life, and probably just like just an introduction of what I work with and stuff like that. So I'm a full stack software engineer or a full stack software developer and more likely working as a full stack web developer. You already know that probably because of my channel, my content I'm providing and everything. I work currently remotely with uh, different like, companies and I work with mostly Toptail as a freelancer. So Toptail, you know, it's a leading platform that uh, gives you freelance projects with big companies giant companies and you can work remotely, which is a great chance to work remotely from home and be able to work with great teams. And it indeed, it provides you with all of that. And I'm super happy and satisfied with all of that. So this is what I do on my days, like work remotely with teams on building scalable and large projects that serves thousands to millions of people around the world. Well, we're done with that. Um, actually, for that particular part, uh, that's why I'm going to be discussing what we got, what I am pretty much using as a software developer and what are the tools I use on my daily basis. So first things first starts with the most basic part for all of that is what is the operating system I'm running on? It's curious in here if you've probably already guessed it right. Yes, I'm running on Linux and more precisely, I'm using Ubuntu, the latest version of Ubuntu. So it's curious in one, it's pretty smooth why I chose Linux. So one of the main things I chose Linux, it is actually because I want to learn Linux, I want to master Linux. Why? Because Linux is actually the leading operating system that's being used by everyone, every organization, every company around the globe, it's being packing up servers, um, like mobile devices, operating systems, backing up IoT, pretty much everywhere. And the ecosystem of Linux is pretty great since it's open source and backed up by the community contributed by thousands to millions of developers around the globe. And so big companies and organizations are backing up Linux. So it's a great chance to get into this like really awesome ecosystem and use all of these tools from open source and back up the community. So this is actually the main reason I used Linux. The second one is why I use Ubuntu. Ubuntu is pretty much or probably right now the top first or the top one uh, Linux distribution being used by many developers, normal users around the globe. That's why I go for Ubuntu because it's widely supported, it has so many packages and it's mainly based on Debine. And all we know like Debine is a great uh, distribution there that allows you to pretty much it has a package manager that is great. It has so many applications, so many companies supporting Debine and more specifically Ubuntu. So that's why we went with Ubuntu. Plus, it has a long term support versions that last for years from five to six years. So that's as well great for me as a developer. So I don't have like just to gamble between updating every single day and just like, you know, gambling between losing data. Yeah. So this part in here is actually about why operating system is great. And all of that screws in here, just a simple terminal in here, you can do whatever you want with it and just like put in shell. And at the meantime, just like using Linux is going to give me the opportunity to learn how to put or how to like use my skills as a developer and improve it alongside using it with Linux. Because learning Linux right now or nowadays is a super crucial thing because everything is running on Linux. I'm just learning these commands, learning how to manipulate the Linux shell, how to create like different kind of shells to automate things, how to put servers online with Linux distributions. It's just like, like, awesome thing to learn throughout your career. So that's why I just made this big move to Linux from Windows because previously I went with Windows. I didn't actually like it much, of course. That's why I moved to Windows or pretty much Ubuntu. And the other thing why I don't use Mac OS X, well, I do use Mac OS X, but not that much. 
I just like used it if I'm gonna do like some iOS development more specific to Mac development but anything older than that I would just go back to Ubuntu because it's a great place. And if you're probably wondering what IDE is I use, the main IDE or the code editor I use is VS Code. So if you've guessed it from my video stories, I always use VS Code. Why? Because it's an awesome code editor, more like an IDE, and it's super great for the environment. Uh, it has like a support for cross platform, so you're not gonna be worried about that. Uh, it has so many themes, the dark theme in here is pretty great. The workspaces are super, super sweet. It has integration with GitHub, which is super great since both are Microsoft kind of products. So they integrate well with each other's. Uh, the X system is awesome here. Like writing code on it is awesome. And beside all of that, as you probably have uh, like heard before, many developers, so many developers, millions of them love using VS Code. And it's probably the top uh, code editor right now on the word. So if you just Google that out, you're gonna find VS Code is gonna pop up as the first choice because it's great. The operating system is great. The integrated terminal makes it even great. Uh, the debugging console, you can debug as many things and create custom scripts for debugging to debug your things. You can even run it with like Flutter, React Native to run native applications on your like devices and run an emulator and everything, all of that. So it is super awesome to have like such a powerful code editor along your side to develop. So VS Code for web development, it gives you so many opportunities, so many features screws in here, uh, so many options that I just got, I can gamble on and move on into another code editor uh, above like, or otherwise than, than pretty much VS Code. And the second thing I love about VS Code is pretty much the extensions it provides. Screws in here have got tons of extensions installed and they all do a great job. So you see Docker in here helps me a lot. GitLens helps me just like uh, be able to collaborate with the teams I work with and just put commands, GraphQL, highlight matching. The index rainbow in here gives me this awesome rainbow screws in here for indentations. Path into license gives me like, if I'm gonna search for an image on really huge repositories, give me into license where the paths are, the markdown if I'm working with it. Uh, this one is giving me like automatic licenses if I'm gonna put like an open source code or something. Um, there's to-dos if I wanted to like head, head up to-do or something like this. Um, just put like to-do, do that. It's gonna do like matching or highlighting and whenever I look for to-dos on the extension, it's gonna give me a full list of to-dos that are available in this source code. So it's awesome and great as well. Uh, TypeScript Hero, icons, you can use so many things like other than just like web development, you can use like C++, Python for machine learning, AI, um, Git history in here, you can use as well. Java, you can use with Node.js. So, so many awesome like extensions, all of that. Uh, also, the, all like recommended extensions in here you can use. I'm using mainly like Chrome for debugging, the Chrome debugging extension, which integrates really well with Chrome. So if you wanna like debug your applications with Chrome, so this one is, is awesome. The second one, if I'm going to like mobile development and more heavily into like Android development, I go with the Android Studio. So always we just go and have that. And I run in the emulator and run like the Android Studio in here, so you see, it's, a, it's an awesome tool as well. It's having a lot of like capabilities to debug, uh, run your code, and so many features that you can pretty much be overwhelmed with. So if you are into web development and as well with like React Native development and mobile development, so just having these two sets in here is just gonna be a life savior for you. So this is what I mainly use for like uh, Android development and more like a native package development for my React Native applications. So it's, it's a great job to do all of that. And the pretty much the third, like more like a notepad kind of like replacement for me is Sublime. So Sublime Tasks, before I was using it like my own code or my main code editor, but it doesn't have that much of functionalities to be honest. So right now I'm using it more like a notepad where just like I can put code on it. So you can open up projects. And the, the thing I love about Sublime is pretty much it's super lightweight and fast. It's just like super fast. You click Sublime and it just open up in, in half a millisecond. So this is great for me as a web developer and I love things to be lightweight that way. So I use it just like to put Jan code, anything I wanna edit, I open it with Sublime. So it's basically my default notepad kind of replacement and it has all my code and just like does it super great. 
So I love Sublime in that particular case and use it like my third uh, code editor kind of thing if I just like need some lightweight, super easy or basic code editor to get started with. So this is basically what I use for that particular case. And for debugging and just like being able to interact with the applications created on the web, especially web applications, I mainly use the Chrome browser in that case because it gives an awesome and a smooth kind of like developer experience. It's supposed to especially with the dev tools. So the dev tools in here, it's a huge integration to the Google Chrome. Um, with the add-ons of the extensions, you can pretty much do anything. And as you I use always the dev tools to pretty much either like look up into my elements, look up into web page if anything goes wrong and see what is going on. Or either the console, I can use it just like to put JavaScript code real quick on, on the go in here or even just like see if errors goes on for debugging, if I just like console lock something and see it here. The network tab, let me analyze what is coming up from the server. If I'm just like loading two uh, kind of huge size bundles for my application, I need to optimize the application or something like that. So network here is an awesome tool as well for like debugging your application and seeing what is going on with the API and everything. I use this like Moco uh, extension to mock up some API, so you don't have to pretty much have a full server running on it, you can just use this extension and you can put like a URL for an API and you mock up the response and the headers and everything. So this one is great for me. I uh, check out sources, you check out the performance in here to run some performances test on that, the memory, the application for local storage and everything and the light will house in here as well for performance testing and the new security tab in here which pretty much validates if you're running uh, your, your application pretty much secure enough to have all of that. So the dev tools in here is no gambling. You can have it pretty much do anything for you, either React code, CSS code, JavaScript code, debugging, testing, integrating new things. It's it's an awesome add-on. So I go over dev tools for Chrome over the, like, the Firefox dev tools, but I also use Firefox mostly because I work a lot on like front end things and with React and everything. And for the UI, I need to test a lot on cross browser. So I choose Google Chrome and Firefox for my cross browser. I might use other browsers if needed, but this is actually the two main browsers I use for debugging and development and like cross browser testing mainly. And listening to music, I mainly use Spotify, I might use Deezer too, but I'm actually the type of developers who love to listen to music and just like sit down and start coding. I can't actually code without listening to music. I mainly could, but I love or I enjoy coding more where I'm just like having these beats going on my like AirPods and just like sitting down and focusing on code. I don't like like two beats kind of music. No, just like shilly music, like lo-fi music or something like that. And I use this kind of like Spotify, it uses some AI, just like does some Discover Weekly on me and it just like puts all of that kind of like music every single week using some machine learning and AI, it grabs the music I love and I mostly listen to. So I just like love starting one and start coding and this could be super great as a developer. So yeah, I love using the Spotify, especially the web player is like more lightweight and it just does things the best way. I love it as, as Chris in here. And some other tools or like applications that you use for API testings. I use Postman, probably a lot of you know Postman. It's been like super, famous lately in here, but I use Postman pretty much for API designs and like collaborating with my teams, especially if you have like huge API, use requests, and I just like need to share them with the whole team for like working on 20, 30 people. So you have to share all of that. I love just putting all collections, sharing them with the team, and then discussing them throughout meetings. So all the data just like has a single source of truth, literally APIs. So APIs actually are, are like a really crucial kind of piece of data that teams should be caring about. And Postman makes it super easy to manage and put, and besides it has like so many functionalities from responses, you analyze the responses, JSON responses, sending headers and authentication, authorization, many, many more. So I use it, I mainly like buy the pro plan with the team members to get everything going on on there. I might also use Insomnia if I'm just gonna go through like something personal and real quick. Insomnia as well as just like an API tester, which is full of features and as well as it's super lightweight. 
screws in here the interface is super great so i might use it sometimes when i'm just like doing uh, just some testing for video tutorials or like stuff that i do it personally not with the team so i love it put it inside of insomnia so yeah beside all of that i also like for communication i love to use in slack a lot slack is like my main thing for communication working with the team uh, so yeah if you have like a team or something a small size team slack is definitely a great choice uh, for you and beside all of that this is actually my full setup so yeah this is the full development setup vs code uh, all the code editors the uh, ubuntu or the operating system i use pretty much everything this might be some like bit details i couldn't go through but this is probably the full view that way you can pretty much imagine a software developer or a software or a full stack web developer pretty much uses on daily basis for developing websites and putting together ui elements and using this or putting react components together and collaborating with teams and everything so yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed this video tutorial if you like this kind of video tutorials i would like to put more for you guys to understand what i do for work and just give you my experience and how stuff goes in here and there but i hope you guys enjoyed it as well i did enjoy actually just talking about my developer setup kind of thing going on in my life or my like career here uh but anyhow guys thank you guys for watching i said before i hope you guys have enjoyed this type of video tutorials don't forget to subscribe of course and push the like button if you really like this tutorial and hope you guys enjoyed it so catch you hopefully in the next ones <laughs>